Sinamugele kwa lagu Spirit Sundays. Bongo nguchi ni benachi. Njalo nge sonto. Lagu ngapambili wako. I SABC1. Nge sonto. Ekseni. Nge cheno toki. Skati sa ngoko yetu. Yana mtlaj. Now there's a Turkish proverb that says he who conceals his grief finds no remedy for it. And in the spirit of understanding and dealing with emotional suffering and overcoming pain and loss, we invited two people who went through pain and over time managed to pick up the pieces. Today we have in studio Dr. Adam Mohammed, a father who lost three young daughters in a single tragic car accident and he's also the author of a book that intends to help people who are seeking answers why they've undergone emotional suffering. He's joined by a woman whose traumatic life experiences have shaped and inspired her to become an author, life coach and founder of the Phenomenal Woman Initiative. Chris Kennedy, welcome to Spirit Sunday. Welcome everybody. Take your seat. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Mohammed, you wrote this book, Journey into the Unknown. Yes. Now, this book is also about your own personal life. That's Tell right. Tell us about that. Yeah, I wrote the book because I lost my daughters in 1986. I lost three daughters. Uh, we were coming from, we went to visit my mum in Balfour and we were returning back to Durban. Uh, between Falkers and Stanerton, we had a car accident and within the period, my daughters, Shamima was... Uh, 12, Humera was 9, and Nadia was 6. My wife was driving, I was sitting in the passenger seat. The tire burst, uh, she lost control most probably, you know, went on the gravel, and uh, we lost them within the period of one hour, mm. all three of them. Chris, you also have a, a story of your own that led you to write your own book. Please tell us about that. Um, well, I, I guess um, it's about my life, mm -hmm. which is... Um, pretty traumatic. I think I've experienced pretty much as much pain as anyone can apart from the type of mm. loss that the doctor's been through. I grew up with um, an abusive grandfather who was also my father. Mm. Um, for four years he sexually abused me. Um, it led me to have very poor relationships with men. Mm. So as I grew up, when I started you know, relating and, and, and you know, courting and, and getting married, I ended up picking really... Um, substandard partners yes. <laughs> and ended up being married four times. Oh. Um, so I've been through, uh, I guess, emotional abuse, financial abuse. My, my, my late husband was an alcoholic. Mm. Um, so pretty much been through the mill. I mean, be before getting to, to the point of writing a book, what, what was the processes that you went through to, to get over your childhood uh, traumatics that, 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 that made you to write this book? So I guess what, what happened for the first 38 years of my life is I was careening, uh, falling, bouncing off walls and, yeah. and making mistake after mistake. At 38, after a particularly disastrous relationship, I decided to take an overdose because I just couldn't deal with it anymore. Um, the pills kicked in and I ended up on the dining room floor. And then I woke up and I lay on the floor thinking, okay, do I stay down here and eventually die? You know, yeah. Have I taken in as, uh, enough pills to die? Do I, do I stay down here or do I get up? And if I get up, am I prepared to live the next 38 years like I've lived the last 38 years? And I said no. So I went on a quest to find how I had become the person I became yeah. and what I could do to remedy it. And I mean, that quest went through some bizarre stages like most women, you know, yeah. I've done the, 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 the tarot card readings, the astrologers, etc. So I went really much on a, on a journey of, you know, what made me the way I was and how come I had such a, an ability to pick bad rather than pick good. Good, yeah. Mm. yeah. No. Dr. Mohammed, now going through that experience, what helped you heal from that traumatic experience of losing your three kids all at once? Yeah, healing, healing is a very long process really, you know. I mean, uh, trauma and tragedies like we go through is very much like cancer really, you know. There's no cure, just remission basically. Uh, I think we started picking up the pieces. Initially, obviously, you know, we were quite numb. We were in a state of shock, which is, mm. which is necessary, really. It's mm. a brain's way of preserving our mental state. Mm. Uh, you know, it's like a shock absorber, really, you know. But I think I, I lost faith, really, in the Almighty. And I said, look, if, if, if there's an Almighty, you can't do this to us, mm. really, mm. you know. My wife, in the meantime, was on the opposite side of the fence, really, you know. She said, well, we have to believe in him because we have to use him as a crutch, basically. Mm. But huh. it took us almost about four years. I think what really helped us was compassionate friends were very good. You know, they're a, a, a very good uh, service sort of thing. You know, they, they mm. have lots of chapters in South Africa and they're mm. a great support group. 
Also, I think religion helped my wife very much to get to terms with it. But it's a long process, really, you know, mm. it's an arduous process. For me, I think I got back into a job. What I did is I took the tragedy and put it in a closet. I was like an ostrich, buried my hand and said, look, that's mm. the, 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 you know, uh, there's no danger there. But there was danger, really, mm. you know. Obviously, the only thing we wanted in our life is to, you know, to, to reverse our life and go back to the former life that we led. Mm. But it's not possible. You mm. just carry on doing these things. And I think because we lost all children, we lost our future, we lost uh, our extended families, mm. we lost our grandchildren mm. with that, really, mm. you know. But I think compassionate friends, we did a little counseling, and uh, I think it's necessary for us to have faith, really, you mm. know, because it's where when you have faith in the Almighty, then what you do is you take your problems, really, you know, and you share it with it. You shift responsibilities and say you are partly responsible. You have to help us out. Mm. So I think those are the things that really help. Chris, you know, the doctor speaks about faith and spirituality. I mean, they, I love the fact that you, your, your book is called Phenomenal Woman. There might be women also, young girls in South Africa right now that are going through your, your similar kind of journey. In your journey, when did spirituality or your faith kind of pull you through? I think the, 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 my true spiritual journey began with Phenomenal Women. Mm. Um, I think the journey up to the launch of the Phenomenal Women initiative was one of understanding how I became who I was mm -hmm. and, and to a degree uh, reprogramming some of the things I believed about myself. So if you like, the journey started with me first. I picked up along the way a lot of negative beliefs about myself. I'm not good enough, I'm not clever enough, I'm not pretty enough, mm. I'm not worthy, mm. I'm not worth it. And those were programmed in by the people around me, by my grandfather, who, who as a, an authority figure in the family, felt mm. he could use me in any way that he thought he felt like using me at the time, and then discard me, because mm. intimacy yeah. with him in private and then in public, complete disregard. It, it, it makes you um, believe really negative things about yourself. So my journey from age 38 until about five years ago was more one of what do I believe about myself and who taught me that? Mm. How did I learn that? And is it true? Mm. From there, reprogramming my brain, my beliefs about myself, when I launched Phenomenal Women, it was about found, finding the God within. Um, because I believe, you know, that, that, that spirituality begins with the fact we are created by God and He leaves some of Himself in us as a source and a resource. And Phenomenal Women took me from believing in God to a day-by-day -day walk with God in an intimate relationship with Him, where every day I look and say, okay, what am I learning today? Mm. What is the world that I've manifest mm. teaching me about my limitations, about my hesitations, mm. so that I can truly begin to live the life that God wants me to live, yeah. mm. which is one so, of teaching uh, young girls mm. the phenomenal inside them so that they can become empowered and can lead the lives they were designed to live, not what society has taught them is appropriate for them. Okay. Now, your way of also uh, giving back to God and, and serving God was opening up the Shahumna Assessment Center, uh, helping the community with charity. Tell us about that very briefly. Yeah, at the time my daughters passed away, Nujan was looking for a charity ready. She wanted a foundation ready. We built a foundation around the name of the girls ready. Mm. And so she found the school uh, from Durban to Pacheston. They had nothing where they could have an assessment center to assess deaf children. Mm. So we managed to put a center up uh, known as Shahum Nashami Mahumira Nadia Assessment Center. Mm -hmm. But I've recently put up a, uh, a dialysis unit on Nujan Adam Foundation in Chatsworth, really, you know. Mm. And what we're doing is uh, we're doing free treatment for all the dialysis, most of the dialysis patients that we can uh, do mm. that sort of thing. But we're also doing uh, with with my, the sale of my books, that's all going to the dialysis unit, going, going to charity basically, really. Mm. And we we'll oh. want to set up some more dialysis center, but we need to use this as an experiment and see how we do. I think the idea is, you know, we've been fortunate we have a little, so we can give ready, and mm. we have to give mm -hmm. to receive ready. Mm. You know. Well, thank you to the both of you. And
Chris, for me, this is special because I've got a lot of sisters. Have you really? <laughs> this is very special because, I mean, you know, I've got a lot of sisters in my family and cousins, and I think all, all of them will benefit from reading this book, Phenomenal Woman mm. by Chris Kennedy, Your I, Journey to oh, a Phenomenal Life. I also think people would uh, quite like Journey to the Unknown. Because one thing I've learned from both of you guys is the power of the mind. You yeah. spoke a lot about the power of the mind, which is, you know, I think a lot of, I yes. think both of these books will, you know, communicate that to well, our viewers.